Today I'm making a very historically inaccurate but very cute gingham corset. I love gingham, okay? This is for my new project, Sakizo's Strawberry Dress, and I'm gonna be trying some new techniques this time, but even with a more complicated construction, this corset is not that hard to make. In the last corset video, I showed you how to make a two-layer corset with a floating lining and internal boning channels. But this time, it's gonna be a two-layer corset that is flat-lined and has external boning channels, which is a pretty different construction. So the pattern for this, I wanted to try my hand at doing like a full 1850s corset, but I went looking for a pattern. Truly Victorian doesn't have one. And Red Threaded, an incredible corset maker with a shop of corset patterns, shop is down. She did have one, and I did find a video of, I don't want to say her name wrong, this YouTuber. She has done a video with that corset pattern, and getting a look at it made me go, you know what, that looks so different than anything I've ever done. I don't think today is the time to do that, because I need this now, because for me to even be able to pattern the bodice, I need the corset, because you need to pattern the bodice over the corset or it's not gonna fit right. Uh, but first, I gotta thank today's sponsor, Dragon City. Dragon City is a chill little free-to-play mobile game that you can get on any device, and it's just really fun. You get to take care of your little dragons, and you build them little buildings and farms and habitats, and it's all in these, like, cute, floating islands. The dragons come in different elements. So there's flame dragons, ice dragons, electric dragons, and nature dragons. And the thing I like is that you can breed the dragons of different elements and then you get different elemental combos. You hatch the eggs and they become little baby dragons that are really cute. And then you feed them and they evolve and they become big boy dragons. There's over a thousand dragons that you can collect of different elements, variable rarities, and they all have unique designs. Also, there's YouTuber dragons that you can find, and I really want to get the Mr. Beast one. Y'all know I be doing that Mr. Beast intro stuff in this video. But yeah, it's just your own little empire of dragons on your phone, and if you want to check it out, you can use the link in the description or the QR code on screen right now, and if you do that, you will get a starter pack of 15,000 food, 30 30,000 gold, and the rare Scout Dragon. Thanks again, Dragon City, for sponsoring this video. Use the link in the description or the QR code on screen right now to start your little dragon empire today. <laughs> back to the corset. So what I decided to do is go with a corset pattern that I already have and alter it a little bit to include one technique that was in 1850s corsets that I've never done before so I could try it. And that technique being a bust gusset. So what I did was I took my corset pattern that I made for my Sakizo diamond. I essentially just took the part of the pattern on the bust and I took off the curve that normally becomes the bust and I took that and transferred it and I made a new bust gusset. And and I only wanted to do one bus gusset because I'm scared and I'm lazy. So now I have a corset pattern with big old hips and one place for one bust gusset. We'll see how that goes. I did try. Okay, I did do a test. So what I have on the table right now is half of the corset. I have chosen this beautiful pink gingham and this blue duck cloth for the structural layer because FedEx is refusing to bring me my white duck. But I also reinforce this gingham with interfacing and normally you don't want to do this. Normally you don't want to put your interfacing on the fashion layer, but this fabric is really cheap and thin and it really needed it. Anyway, what we want to do right now is ignore the front and backs. And we want to focus on these three because what we want to do for flat lining is take each of our pairs and we want to temporarily combine them so that we can sew with them as if they were a single piece of fabric. In old timey times, they did something called pad stitching, which is essentially just a big old whip stitch through the middle of it. I am going to do that, but you can also just do a basting stitch around the edges. But we got to do something different to the fronts and backs because these actually need to be bag lined on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them right sides together and we're gonna sew down the edges that are gonna become the center front and the center back. We needed to do that to the center back because that's where the lacing strip is gonna go. So to have a clean edge on that side, we wanna bag line that edge. But we needed to do this right now because the first thing we need to do before we sew any of the pieces together is install a separating busk, which I've literally never done before because I've never needed to. A separating busk is a metal closure that goes at the front of the corset, and it serves essentially to make it so that you don't have to lace the corset up every single time you wanna put on the corset, like the last corset I made. But not having a busk is totally fine. Corsets did not always have separating busks, and it's also not a safety issue because the fastest way to get yourself out of a corset if you need to in an emergency 
is to cut your laces. If you tried to undo the busk on a fully laced corset, you would bend or break the busk before it let you out, which is why if you have a corset with a separating busk, you need to fully unlace the corset before you undo the busk. It is not a quick release to get you out. It is a quick closure to help you get in. Now, like I said, I've literally never installed one of these before, but I have watched like 30 people do this on YouTube. So let's go for it. Uh, here, I'll show you the busk. Why didn't I pull out a busk yet? I don't know. This is the busk. I'm sure I'll put B-roll in there for this. So I have my busk, right? So you've got one side with tiny mushrooms and one side with Diet Coke tabs. You may notice this one I already did the bag lining on. You want to do one of them already and you wanna wait to do the bag lining on the other because we actually need to mark on this where the Diet Coke tabs are gonna go through. But this one, it can be bag lined already because we're actually just gonna stab a hole into the fabric and shove the little mushrooms through. It's pretty simple. Pretty sure the way you do this is you put it in here and I, I need to determine where this is gonna go and sort of make them kiss. This is the thing where if you mess this up, it would probably be bad, but we're not gonna mess it up, okay? Because we have a heat erase pen. And what else in the world do you need besides a heat erase pen? I'm gonna mark where that is gonna sit. I honestly think the easiest way to do this is gonna be like do this and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stab holes. This side is probably the easier side, the mushroom side. I don't have an awl. An awl is like a pointy thing that you use to poke holes in fabric. I don't have one, but I do have these like foam tools. So I'm just gonna use my foam tool. That's not working. <laughs> oh, I bent it. <laughs> There's no way I don't have some kind of pointy metal in here. Oh, wait, I do. A uh, yarn needle. Let's see if that works. Or a darning needle, is that what these are called? Okay, that one's too dull. Aha, I did it. I did it without an all. You're not supposed to like cut a hole because it's supposed to go like through the threads, but I'll be real honest. I think the mushrooms might need to get a little hole punched with the hole puncher. And if they do, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's see if we can shove these mushrooms in there. No, that's not gonna work with the interfacing on there. I'm gonna punch holes in it. Now let's see if the mushrooms will go in. Hey, they do. Okay, and now I'll do it later, but what we're gonna do after that is it's so real close to the edge of that bone to secure the busk in there. See, it's not that hard. I didn't entirely do it right, but that one's easy. And so now this one, we need to make like more marks on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark my seam allowance. And I'm gonna grab my Diet Coke tabs. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put them on the mushrooms. And I'm gonna line these up at the top. And so now I know that this is gonna start right here. Put it where it's gonna go. Essentially what we're gonna do is I'm going to mark at the top and the bottom of every single one of the Diet Coke tabs. So now we have a bunch of marks and basically, maybe I'll do a graphic for this. So stop, backstitch, pick up, backstitch. So stop, backstitch, pick up, backstitch. So stop, backstitch. Get it? You're gonna make holes in your seam allowance for the Diet Coke tabs to go through. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now to take this to its full glory, I'm gonna need to press it flat. So I'm gonna go do that. She's pressed, so now I should just be able to take my Diet Coke tabs. We should be able to find those little holes and birth little Diet Coke tabs out from in between the fabric if it would even let me do it. Uh, uh. Yeah, look at that. I made my first busk, baby's first busk. Okay, so now we gotta do the part that will probably scare some people because the likelihood that you will break a needle, not on my like button, but on your busk is pretty high, but you can reduce that risk by using the right foot. I like, I'm sure I showed this one last time when I talked about sewing right up next to boning, but essentially what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew right up around the busks and having a foot like this, an adjustable zipper foot, is gonna help me get really close while being less able to actually break a needle on it. And you really don't wanna break a needle on these cause it's metal and that will probably send the needle flying. And if you don't wear glasses, you should probably wear glasses for this part. 
don't be scared. Also break a needle on the like button for me. <laughs> well, I hope to not break a needle. Also, I know I threw a lot of shade at my brother machine in the last video, but the faff is currently being serviced. So my only choice is the brother. But also I would not uh, do this step on the faff just for the risk of breaking a needle on it. I joke a lot, but breaking a needle on your machine is actually not very good. It just happens to me a lot. Now we can actually sew the corset together, which is kind of the fun part. Cause with this kind of construction method where you're flatlining and you're using two layers as one, we're gonna do something fun with the seam allowance. We're actually gonna sew the entire corset backwards. And I mean that. What we're gonna do is sew everything wrong sides together so that the seam allowance ends up on the outside. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the seam allowances in our bias tape that's blue gingham. Listen. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna use our boning channels to cover the seam allowances. So this is how it ends up looking. When they're first sewn together, they look like this, but then you can trim this down and then cover it with your boning channels. Now, like I said in the last video, if you're not super confident in sewing a really straight line like this, you can always put them on the inside. You don't have to make a corset this way. But doing a two layer corset that's flat lined is really cool because with a, a floating lining, you basically have to sew the corset together twice. But this way you only have to do it once. So it's a lot faster. But yeah, I actually bought this fabric to make curtains a while back and then I never did it. <laughs> it was gonna be pink on my side and blue on Joe's side. But yeah, it's the same gingham, but it's blue. I'm obsessed with it already. But yeah, let's get the rest of these pieces sewn together. Pressing your seams is always super important, but with a flat line corset, if you don't do it, it kind of just doesn't work. So please press them. It is at this moment now that I just realized I forgot to put the bust gusset on this side. Seam ripping time. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure the way that you do this is that you take these edges and you fold them under and then you literally just top stitch the gusset in. I watched like a couple videos of people doing corsets like this and I was like, it's, there's no way that's, it's that easy. But I asked my discord and they said, yes, that's what you do, but no, it's not easy. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna clip this seam allowance here because it's gonna go from being turned outward to being turned inward. And then I'm gonna take this over to the iron and I'm gonna fold these over and I'm gonna go ahead and press them so that they're nice and flat already. So that's pressed now. So I think all I literally have to do is take this and pin it in place and then top stitch it in. I feel like the hard part is gonna be getting them to be the same. It looks kind of wonky, but let's go it. So there's my bust gusset. It appears to be gusseting. Also, another thing I don't think I said in the first corset video, if you're making a corset and it won't sit flat on the table while you're making it, your pattern's right. <laughs> For it to like really hug your body, if it is sitting flat on the table, you're not getting any of that hip. This indicates, ooh, there is some curve and space in this pattern. Curve that I do not have on my body, but I will have in the corset. Anyway, I'm gonna hold this up to my boob and I'm gonna see if it fits. Am I just gonna do that on camera? Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. We're working with like a A to B cup here and you can pad. So I'm not super worried if it's not exactly my bust shape. So now, I need to install all of the boning channels. So I wasn't really sure what to do about this one where the gusset is, but I did see a couple corsets like from the era where the boning channel actually like goes over the gusset and this is a little wide. So I might reduce that down to this one being like a single bone and do that. And maybe, maybe do a single bone on this one too. So it's like thin, thin, thickaka, thickaka. I think that might be cool. Uh, but installing boning channels is not hard, but doing external ones, you are gonna wanna be a little more careful with it. There's no sort of trick to it. You just gotta go slow, be careful. If your machine has a speed setting, you can always turn the speed setting down. Essentially, you're just doing two top stitches on either side. It can be hard, especially if you have a very curvy corset like this one to get through that waist area, but just hold on, do one side and do the other. And if it's not perfect, well, it's your corset, so it doesn't matter. Plus this is going under a dress anyway, so who gives a fuck? But with one gusset installed, I moved on to the other side of the corset. And yes, I did just install this front panel to this side, forgetting to do the bust gusset. 
again. But with the other gusset installed and all the boning channels done, I added some cute pink lace that I didn't actually have enough of to go all the way around the corset, so it kind of just stops at the armpit. But I basted that on first before installing the binding, which of course starts the same way every time you unfold the whole thing. You place it right sides together on the top and you straight stitch it onto the top of the corset before refolding it and flipping it to the other side. And I actually decided to do a stitch in the ditch for this one. A stitch in the ditch is literally what it sounds like. You do a stitch in the ditch that you just created by sewing the binding onto the top of the corset. So you put it in that little crack between them. And what that does on the back side, well, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to catch the back side of the binding. And that can be kind of hard because you're working from the top, right? So what I do, I will pin the back side of the binding from the top with pins going horizontally. And that way I can kind of actually see where the back side of the binding is going. So I make sure it gets caught by the stitch. This technique does take a lot of precision and don't worry, you don't have to do it this way. It does look just as nice and clean if you do it with a whip stitch on the back by hand. But if you are looking to try this and your sewing machine does have a speed setting, it can be really helpful to turn the speed setting down and just go really slow. But then it was time to insert all the bones. And I am again using a combo of the synthetic whalebone, which I don't know if I said in the last video, it is incredibly comfortable and it really does shape to your body. But if you can't find it anywhere, spiral steel boning is just as comfortable. And then of course I have flat seal boning on the very back. If you want more on boning and where to place it, please check out the first corset video. I went into way more detail. Last step is the eyelets, which I did with my eyelet setter. And if you've never done eyelets before, do not worry. If you buy a little kit that comes with a setter, it's going to have instructions and it's really not that hard to figure out. You just need a hammer and you just got to hit it with a hammer and you'll have eyelets like these. Well, I was going to take all this stuff off the wall, but I kind of think it's funnier if I just leave it. I've already laced up the corset. So just to show you what you are supposed to do to do bunny ears. So you start the lacing at the top and then do X's until you get to your two centermost eyelets. And with those two center eyelets, you're gonna create your bunny ears. And the bunny ears are gonna help you put the corset on by yourself. So you'll see how I do it. I'm so excited. I finally have a corset I can put on by myself. How novel. A big thing you want to do when you put on a corset is make sure that your waist is where it's supposed to be. And I, of course, if I didn't mention yet, forgot to f***ing put the waist tape in. So I don't have a waist tape to really tell me where my waist is, but as long as it feels kind of right, then you're good. And what you do to lace yourself up is you grab your bunny ears, and then you can pull the top ones down to close the top, and these ones on the bottom up, close the bottom. And there we go, a corset I can put on myself. Wow, what a fun invention busks are. <laughs> okay, this came up a little too high. But we're not gonna mess it up, okay? But I can fix that by hand, I swear. Uh, in terms of the fit, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I will say I'm getting a little bit of a smush boob thing happening with the gussets. I don't think I made them quite big enough, but for my titties, I think it's going to be fine. I can see where bust gussets would be really hard if you have a bigger bust, but especially since I am kind of cheating, this panel was still like shaped to my bust. And honestly, my bust is more like less round and more just like, I don't know. But I do have lots of room down here and you actually kind of want that in a corset like this, but yeah. We did it. Let's go. Also, I think it's so cute. If you couldn't tell, I fucking love gingham. It might be my new favorite corset, just for the fact that I can put it on by myself, which most people that make corsets can do that with most corsets, but I am not most people. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Use the link in the description or the QR code on screen right now to start your little dragon empire today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If this helps you on your corset journey, please break a needle on that like button for me. If you have any questions or concerns, please join the Spacecraft Discord. The next video you're going to get is going to be a craft room tour because I'm actually going to be moving very soon. And this was sort of the last opportunity I had to show you my little space that I craft in. Stay tuned for that. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. But if you're just liking, watching, commenting, or subscribing, you're supporting the channel too. So thank you. Bye!
Bye. Thank you to the patrons. Allison, Queen Platypus, Riri Rose 16, Taylor, Tessa Bow, Haley, Alyssa, Mac, Akima Aki, Chibi Lease, Rainbow Lola, Gloomshroom, Infinite Salad, Miba, Kel, Hubasta, Mads, Ollie Boondingles, The King Theory, Magda, Paint It So, Sky, Ash, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Allison, Spacey Stitches, Foxy McLoxy, Sunny, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus Minor, Raina, Food Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Stephanie, Katie, Experimental Blue, Tobias, Showman, Alice, Lena, Sostra, Haley, Evandaria, Samantha, Faybound, Adriana, Amber, Kim, Fennec, Emma, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty DJ, Meredith, Taylor, Sarah, Kira Draws, Cal Bones, Bianca, Lunar, Gaia, Lula Rush Cosplay, Deal of Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Amelia, Julian, Cam, Zen, Pin, Snip, and Claire. Ooh.